What's up guys? Mike here with Morrison's Outdoor Adventures. So we're in our next installment of the mechanic series, right? So we're tonight we're going to talk about brakes, right? Brakes are a big part of what we do off-road. You know, we got to stop going down that hill, but we're just mainly going to be talking about how the brake system works and it'll touch a little bit lightly on how that affects things like trash control and then how our brake system suffers through different types of terrain uh, and uh, different scenarios and then also how our brake system suffers due to uh, the modifications we put on the vehicle, right? So moving right into what we are going to be talking about uh, underneath the hood here. So this is where we're gonna talk about kind of the main start of our brake system. So when you press your brake pedal, right? You press that brake pedal, you are basically accentuating a master cylinder uh, through a brake booster, right? That brake booster gives you uh, some extra braking. So you're not taking all of the brunt of that. But when you go through, basically what you're doing is you're pushing fluid out of this reservoir, right? You're pushing fluid down through the braking system. So everything kind of starts right here underneath uh, the hood. Now, typically the only thing we're concerned about with our brakes underneath the hood here is our brake reservoir, okay? So this reservoir right here that I'm wiping off. The big thing with these is on the side, they're gonna have a max and a min, okay? And that max and min just lets us know, and it's kind of hard to see because normally they're clear. So there's my min and there's my max line, but we're looking to make sure that we keep our brake fluid where it needs to be, okay? Now, again, it can be hard to see. One trick is, is if you take a flashlight, right, and shine it right down on top, it'll highlight the brake fluid and you can shake it a little bit and see it shake around. But that lets us know the level of our brake fluid. If we run out of brake fluid and we get any kind of air in the brake system, it's not gonna work correctly. You're gonna get a soft pedal that's gonna cause some issues, right? Because we can't compress air like we can compress the brake fluid. So we always wanna make sure we have fluid in here, never letting it get below that min mark. Now, as we use our brakes, right? And we'll see this in a little bit when we look at the calipers and the brake pads wear, that means that those calipers have to pinch or compress more, right? Taking more fluid. So if you look underneath the, the hood and you see that you're at the min mark and you're like, oh man, I'm low on brake fluid and you add a bunch of brake fluid in there, but then turn around and find out that your brake pads are low, you're gonna have to actually pull brake fluid out, right? So it can be a good indicator if your fluid is low that your pads are getting close to being worn out. Because if you start with max, brake pads get worn out, it's gonna be close to the min mark, right? The other thing with brake fluid containers is this is a sealed system, right? So anytime that we take this cap off and on, and anything that we get inside of here, right, it's permanent inside that system unless we drain all the fluid out and reflush it, which is a nightmare, right? But you should be doing that a minimum of once a year, okay? Not many of us do that, but a minimum of once a year replacing your brake fluid. Because again, brake fluid cycles heat, okay? So making sure that we are flushing that brake fluid all the way through. A good shop can do that for you. You can do it at home, but it's a little bit of a nightmare. Um, but a good, a good four wheel drive shop would be able to do that for you or any good shop, really. So that's underneath the hood here. Now we'll see, we've got some, uh, some hard lines coming out of the master cylinder down here, right? These are our hard brake lines. You're gonna find that you have hard and soft brake lines. Anything that needs to move is gonna have a soft brake line. Anything that doesn't is gonna have a hard brake line. Now these can still be pinched, bent, and broken. Uh, so you wanna be careful with them, but this is typically coming out of our master cylinder. Now, if you have trash control, okay, or most modern vehicles, even without trash control, you're gonna have what they call a four channel system, right? Meaning that there is gonna be a brake line running to each tire. So there's gonna be four of them for four tires. Now, if you've got an older vehicle, you may have a two channel system where you only have two coming out. They come out and then they split to each tire, or you may have a three channel system, two for the separate front tires and one going back and then splitting for the rear, right? So two, three, four channel systems. Anything that's modern and has trash control is gonna have that four channel system so it can, in, can control each brake individually, okay? Control each brake individually. So with that being said, this is underneath the hood, right? 
Um, some brake boosters like this one on our Land Cruiser here uh, is electronic. Some can be vacuum actuated, all different types of brake boosters. Some can even run off your power steering with like Hydro Boost and stuff like that. Um, so not going to get quite that in depth, but that does help you with keeping uh, and being able to accentuate your pedal, right? Now, let's, uh, we're going to lift the truck up here and uh, then we're going to look underneath uh, at some brakes. All right, so we've got the truck up on the lift. Huge thank you to Commonwealth for giving us access to uh, one of their lifts today so that we can make this project go a little bit easier. All right, let's uh, go underneath here and we're gonna start talking about the brake system from our master cylinder and brake reservoir down to each individual tire. All right, turn the light on here. But, so we can see here, we've got our hard lines coming through and we've got our uh, little swirls here uh, through a junction block. Right, so uh, rear brakes, front brakes coming out, comes down. Now we've got our first soft line right here, right? This is our first soft line or only soft line on the front, right? And this is so that our suspension can move up and down. No problem, right? Ours is a little muddy, but uh, no, no big issues. Don't confuse it with your wheel speed sensor line, right? right? Which is gonna be much smaller. Uh, your brake lines are typically going to be bigger than a pencil, a little bit bigger than a pencil, but closer to that size where your wheel speed sensors are going to be much smaller. And the brake lines are going to run directly down to a caliper, okay? Or if you have drum brakes, right, on an old school vehicle, or if you drive a Toyota, older Toyota Tacoma, they can have drum brakes. But caliper is going to be the most common one that we run into, right? So actually on this one, we're getting ready to replace this caliper because this caliper is frozen right and i'll show you more here in a minute about how the calipers work but what we've got our brake pads here this is what you typically replace right and you actually don't even need to take the brake pad off on some vehicles or brake caliper to replace the pads we can just pull pins and pull pads out and replace them right but since we're replacing the whole caliper here we're going to take care of that but basically this is what we call a four piston caliper it has one two three four pistons that squeeze right when the fluid goes in you can have six piston if you have something big like a power brake um, or you can even have just like a one piston or a two piston caliper for smaller vehicles and smaller cars and stuff now one thing uh, to take into note you can see how this one is kind of corroded right these pins right here have some corrosion on them and they have some dirt and grime we want these pins or these brake pads to slide freely. If they can't slide freely back and forth, then our brakes aren't gonna work efficiently. We can either not be able to get any braking out of it, meaning they can't close, or they can't separate, meaning our brakes are gonna drag, which is actually what's kinda happening on this one. We can see how it's a little harder to spin here, right? And we can go very easily to freely spin the other one. So our, uh, not only are our pins sticking a little bit, but our uh, uh, pistons are not backing off after we release the brake pressure because they have a little bit of corrosion on them. You're also gonna have a uh, bleeding uh, valve right here that you can open up and bleed brake fluid out of so we can bleed the air out of the system. Now, when you press your brake, when you press your foot down and this squeezes, Right, it'll squeeze these down with those, in this particular one, with those four pistons, and it squeezes the rotor, right? The rotor is what's attached to our hub. So that rotor is what's gonna slow everything down, okay? Slowing that hub down as that brake is pinching it. Builds up a lot of heat, which we'll talk a little bit more about here in a little bit, but the rotors are a wearable item too. If they experience too much heat, they can become glazed, cracked, they can even uh, get warped. So when you hit your brakes, you're gonna feel a shimmy. So we wanna keep that in mind. And if you look in the top of them right here, they have cooling fins, right? See these cooling fins that actually scoop and pull air through to the center, helping to pass air through, just like your radiator, just with no fluid, right? Now off-road, we can see we got one right here. They get packed full of mud really bad, right? So they don't cool as efficiently, especially if we're not cleaning them out. How many times have you cleaned your brake rotors out, right? Not often. Now, we can easily, again, replace brake rotors. Used to be back in the day, you could also get them turned where they'd take a little bit of material off to even them out. It's not as common anymore because it's not super expensive to replace rotors on most vehicles, right? And we'll talk a little bit about different types of rotors in a minute. Now, let me grab a good caliper.
So here's a good caliper, right? So we can see the pistons on the inside here. So these are the pistons that accentuate and they squeeze shut, okay? And they will move freely now. On this particular one, we have what we call a banjo nut. So this banjo nut is what allows the fluid to go in, right? The fluid actually passes through a little port in this banjo nut once I get it out here. So we can see it's hollow, right? It's got little holes in it and it's got a little collar that goes around it. But we can see this one is definitely much, much cleaner um, and we don't have the corrosion or anything so that these pistons can close down. And I'll, I have new pins, right? That'll go with it. So we'll have pins and they're nice and clean so that they'll slide freely and the brake pads can slide and do what they need to do. If you don't have new pins, you can take your old ones out. Don't get on them with a grinder, right? But like a wire wheel or something that's not gonna remove material, but it can clean some of that corrosion and stuff off, you can do that and clean that pin up to get it to work correctly. But that is a new caliper. And we even comes with a new bleeder screw and all that good stuff that we're gonna add on here. Now, let's uh, go to the back and we will look at some uh, calipers in the back. All right, so we've already got the old caliper off on the rear here and we've got the new one on. So this is what we call a single piston caliper, right? It just has a single piston here on the inside and actually the whole unit slides on these slide pins back here, right? So technically it's two piece. You've got the bracket, right, that bolts on and then you've got the caliper that actually bolts onto the bracket with slide pins. So same thing, we've got to keep these slide pins clean. That's actually what happened with this one is these have gotten corroded and messed up. So they got froze up and they're not releasing. So we need to, to get a new caliper on there. We could probably pull them off and clean them up. But again, this caliper is probably as old as this truck. So 1999 or uh, maybe a little bit newer, but not by much. So we've already pulled this one off and got our new one on. And I didn't have to replace brake pads. So I still have my original brake pads on there. Now, you do have a sight tube through here that you can look in to see uh, where your brake pads are at. So you can see whether they're extra worn, you need to replace them, so forth, blah, 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 right? Now, banjo bolt, everything on this one's connected. One thing you can do if you wanna make sure that uh, your braking system is gonna work correctly is you can lube these pins with something, but being a brand new caliper, I'm not super worried about them getting uh, froze up. It's probably already greased in there and we have these rubber boots to protect everything. So this one is all tightened up, ready to go. We're just gonna have to bleed the brakes and get it working. All right, so. Uh, how do different types of terrain affect your brakes, right? Well, not all terrains are going to affect your brakes. If you're in rocks and stuff like that, other than using your brakes, right, there's no real effect on them. If we start going through things like sand, right, so sand will actually polish a lot of your brakes if it's getting up into your brake system, but it'll also cause your uh, pads to wear much more quickly, right, because you, now you're getting sand and grit in there, and when they close down, they can cause some issues. Mud is the biggest downside to our brakes, right? We get mud caked in here. It's really hard to clean them when they're still on the truck. So we can still see we've got a little bit of mud in there and stuff. The pins are pretty dirty on this and corroded. We're gonna have to clean those out to get them to accentuate correctly. Um, but mud stays in there, causes corrosion. It also can get really hard packed and cause some issues uh, with those uh, pads sliding correctly, right? So mud, right? Boo. Also, mud can get inside of that rotor, those cooling fins like we talked about earlier, and ca cause some issues there. Because um, if they're packed full, they're not gonna work effectively. So the other thing about rotors I wanna talk about, there's, there's some, some controversy out there, uh, and I'm gonna share my opinion, or my experiences rather, on rotors. So you can get what they call cross-drilled or slotted rotors. What does that mean? Well, cross-drilled rotors, they actually drill through the rotor, okay, and they punch holes in it. This is a race technology, right, to help the rotor cool so air can actually move through it. So as it comes in the cooling fins, comes out, it's able to move more air through. Works great on a racetrack, right? But for those of us that drive off-road, it's another thing that's gonna get packed full of mud, okay? And how do they make clay bricks or how do they make bricks with heat and mud, right? 
and, and different materials. So brakes get super, super hot, super hot. Um, even on like race vehicles in the Dakar, talking with some, some of the best uh, uh, brakes in the industry, like power brake, those brakes get so hot that the mud and stuff that's in the caliper, when they get super cooled, crossing rivers and stuff like that, it actually turns to glass, right? So, you know, that's how hot a braking system can get. Now that's on race trucks, we're not on race trucks, but same concept applies. So I don't do the cross-drilled rotors. Now, slotted rotors, however, is much, uh, much better process because slotted rotors just have these grooved out lines in them, right? These are not slotted rotors, but sl slotted rotors will have a grooved out line in them and they will allow, again, some air to pass through and they also allow some brake dust and debris and stuff to get off the, off the rotor. You can't pack those full of mud right? I'm sure you could if you tried hard enough, but most of the time you're not going to. So we want to make sure that we're not getting cross-drilled rotors for off-road rigs, but slotted rotors are a good thing to go with. One thing you can do if you go to like a, a power brake setup, and we'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute, but with a power brake setup, you can get a, a bigger caliper, like a six-piston caliper, where you're going to have a much bigger uh, pad. Now, a bigger pad is not necessarily going to do anything for you without a bigger rotor, right? So Let's talk about a little bit about how brakes struggle with their aftermarket stuff, right? All right, so when we start modifying our vehicle, right? Um, well, let's start when we buy a stock vehicle, completely stock, and it's got a, you know, 30 inch tire on it, a light P rated tire, or even if it is a, a, a LT tire or something like that, and uh, it's just a all season or highway tire, super lightweight right? So weight does play a part in how this rotor can stop. It's got a lot of rolling mass with just the tire here, okay? A lot of weight. But the biggest difference is when we go with a bigger tire, right? So we start getting a bigger tire that is much wider or taller, right? Now you've still got the same size rotor. It doesn't have the leverage to stop all this weight that's out here at the end. Not to mention now we've gone with a bigger tire that's heavier, Maybe you've changed rims and you've got a much uh, uh, heavier rim. Now we're starting to see, right, where we're starting to run into those issues, okay? And the rotor is becoming uh, insufficient to slow the vehicle down properly. Now, if we're just making some changes with tires and wheels, we're probably not going to notice a big difference. But when you start adding all the weight of bumpers and uh, uh, skid plates and winches and recovery gear and then your camping gear and stuff too, this is where we're going to see that difference. Okay, this is where we're going to start to see the problems in our brakes and see them struggle with stopping these bigger tires. So we have that increased stopping distance and with that increased stopping distance and the increased pressure needed to slow all that down, we're going to get a whole lot more increased heat building up right on this uh, rotor. So we can run into more issues with that warping, right? Or the cooling fins being insufficient to cool it down, especially if they're packed full of mud um, or your brakes not working as long. Or you could even have brakes that overheat, right? Just like a semi truck or something like that. And they can have issues going down the road, okay? So typically we do recommend, and we know it's not the coolest modification ever, but we do recommend a brake upgrade, especially if you've changed to uh, some heavier bumpers and a bigger tire and wheel combo. Uh, so brake upgrade wise, there are a lot of options on the market. There is a lot of smoke and mirrors, right? Just a big upgrade kit does not fit the bill and solve the bill. Remember what I said earlier about needing a bigger rotor, right? If we get a taller rotor that will give it more leverage to be able to slow down this tire, that's huge, right? And maybe even more surface area for a larger pad to clamp down. And if we can get something like a six piston, if you have a four piston caliper going to a six piston caliper uh, with a bigger pad, we'll make sure that that pad, when it clamps down, distributes that load evenly around that brake. And also with a bigger pad, it's more distribution of heat being put down onto that rotor, right? So we typically recommend Power Brake. Um, they are out of South Africa. They're incredibly, incredibly smart. Um, a lot of your, they've been in the race industry for a long time. A lot of your Dakar trucks uh, and race trucks and stuff like that are all gonna be running Power Brakes on them. A lot of your military vehicles will have Power Brakes on them, things like that. Um, so 
they do have those types of kits out there uh, in big break upgrade kits that are truly big break upgrade kits, right? Not necessarily smoke and mirrors. So make sure that you're choosing the correct one for your vehicle. Um, and one thing I'll add in about brakes when we're choosing this kind of stuff is, is understanding that the front brakes are super important, right? 60% or more of our braking is on the front end of our vehicle, okay? when we are traveling forward. So when we're going down a hill, all that braking is on the front end. When we're uh, navigating through rocks and stuff like that, a lot of that braking is on the front end. But when we're backing down a hill or we're stuck on a hill and we're just sitting there, we do have a lot of brake pressure on the rear. So make sure you're choosing those brakes accordingly um, and making sure everything fits into place. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna make sure uh, to get this uh, Land Cruiser finished up, get my brakes back working. We've gotta to get to an event this weekend. Um, but thank you for joining us and listening to me talk a little bit about brakes. I know it's not the coolest subject ever, but it is an important one because it's a safety subject, right? So uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, again, feel free to leave a question down in the comments or send us a, a, a question through email or text and uh, we'll do our best to answer it. But thank you guys for hanging out with us. Make sure you like, comment, share. Uh, tell your mom, dad, brother, aunts, uncles, dentists, dogs, hairdresser, it doesn't matter. Every little bit that you do to help us get our information out there helps us build our business and our brand. So thank you so much and we will see you next time. Bye.